Joff is, he's different because he'll try and kill you. Do you think the English team are also like that behind closed doors? You know, there's some dark, dark days. Tell us what's actually like facing extreme heat. Was easily the best I've played, purely because of the situation. I feel out of practice. Yeah, it's been a while. This ain't bat chat, mm -mm. it's back chat, but we have a scorcher in the house. Laurie Evans joins us. Hello, mate. Hello. Hello. How are you oh, going? I'm good. It's How are hot. You? It's hot, mate. It's yeah. hot. We've got a fan on. Yeah. You fought a long sleeve. Oh, it's outrageous behavior. Rookie buddy. move. Miss Reed. Uh, <laughs> it's great to have you, mate. We haven't done one of these for a while. A bit of a mm. Chrissy break. Been doing some Scorchers content. So let's see how we go. Back chat powered by Fleet Network this year. Uh, proud to be doing some great stuff with the Scorchers. We've had some great players through, but this man may be seeing them better than anyone else mm. we've had through the door. He's absolutely tonked them in the big bash this year. Now, Laurie, I know you may be a big fan of back chat. You may or may not know the first question that comes to every guest is the same. Your greatest sporting achievement. Now, we, we know you hit the fastest ever 50 in Scorchers <laughs> history. We yeah. saw you do it. We were there. Might yeah, have had a couple of sherbets good. while you did it. It was very good. I've heard a couple of other things, though, because you need to tell us your greatest ever sporting achievement not on the cricket field. Okay. You can put – it sounds like yeah, he's ready. He's ready. <laughs> it sounds like he's ready. <laughs> he's well, I've, I've, I've got a couple. I mean, I'm Go torn ahead. between – Give us them both. You know, uh, there's obviously I'm, – I'm addicted to golf. Right. You know, it's an addiction. Yep. Is it? Uh, yeah. Are you oh, good yeah. at it? I, and I'm, I'm, I'm off plus two. Oof. You know, which – What, they – they have to put on put you go the other way, yeah. Oh, so <laughs> like but that. that that's taken years of hard work practice. Yes. So that's I'm very proud of that. But on the other side, I've got, you know, pushing my dad off the bed for the first time in, you know, Christmas Day wrestling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's more big day. It's a big day. Do you remember you know, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember it, yeah, very well. Did and I was probably about sixteen at the time. <laughs> uh, my he dad was, you know, quite a quite a good rugby player back in the day but he sort of proudly you know kept that reputation of being able to push us both off the bed right in wrestling is that's that something unreal. you did every year was it like a yeah yeah tradition? every every christmas pretty much <laughs> got on the bed right boys yeah, yeah. on the bed it's me and my time. brother yeah <laughs> and you did it when you i like that a lot yeah so it was, yeah, it's a tough one can i Great. ask about the golf I, we did do a little research on this mm. uh we act silly but we're <laughs> usually well prepared did you almost qualify for the open yeah i gave it a go this year yeah, this year? This year, yeah. Holy shit. Um, so first, yeah, first time I've given it a go. And um, What does that involve? You have to basically sort of have a low enough handicap to 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 be able to regis register um, your interest. And then, you know, you get the, the letter through. And if you've, if you've got in, you get told where you would like to um, do it. So luckily there was a golf club near me. So I asked my next door neighbor, who's actually a member of that golf club, to caddy for me. Right. And then we turned up on the first tee and there was a guy from Canada who'd flown over especially and he hit it out of bounds on the first shot. And I was like, oh. So he's done? Yeah, he's like, he's so, flown over from Canada. Game over. And like he's, yeah, he's binned it. So do you have to beat that person? <laughs> no, so basically you just have to shoot. So like, let's say there was seven spots available at my particular course. Right. And there's 15 other golf courses around the country. So you're looking at, you know, 100 spots, give or take, and then they sort of work it out. So I had to shoot roughly about level par, but, you know, the middle of the summer, the greens are tough, you know, yeah. and every shot matters. It's not, you know, just playing with your mates and you can just wing it around. Yeah. Mm. So um, I shot five over, which was, you know, pretty good. I missed a putt from about there, you know, for birdie and little things like that. Yeah. That another year I would probably knock in. I had no idea that's how it worked. It's almost like an FA Cup of so like yeah. It's, it's like well the the funny thing was was that then obviously because of the live stuff yeah the guys who were on live then had to qualify. So if I got through that first round, you're then into final qualifying. So you could rock up and Sergio Garcia as your partner, <laughs> Ian Porter as your partner, <laughs> Lee Westwood as your partner. So yeah. I was just like giggling, just like, how good would this be if I get through? That's yeah. pretty crazy. So how close did you get five over? What's five over. So I had to shoot level par. Right. So yeah, Jeez. five shots to cut for next year. Wow. So is the, is the connection between golf and cricket then? Because you can play cricket. We've seen you do that too. Like, <laughs> is there... Like the hand eye stuff, the that there's a connection, right? There is, yeah. I mean, they're sort of they are similar. You're hitting a white ball. Well, in my case, you're hitting a white ball. I've 
I've given up Red Bull cricket a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, thankfully. Um, so, but obviously they are slightly different disciplines in terms of like golf's a bit more right hand, like cricket's a bit more left hand. Although if you're slogging one, it is right hand. So yeah. it sort of goes hand in hand. Like the more I slog it well, the better my golf gets. So right. You know, I had to make that decision giving up four day cricket. It was like, this is going to help my golf. Yeah. Um, so that's why I did it. I saw you have hit baseball as well. I was watching a video on YouTube. You, you were taking <laughs> a picture from you some sort of deep. Yeah, I was deep. Yeah, deep that's archive. a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big <laughs> rabbit hole. Um, yeah, I gave that a go. You know, the MLB were, you know, in partnership with 100 over in the UK and they asked if huh. you want to go out and face a picture. And it's good, good fun. Um, yeah, yeah. What was life like growing up for you? I used to wrestle your old man, but what, where'd you grow <laughs> up? What, what, you know, siblings, sporting family? Yeah. So I've got a brother, younger brother, um, Ollie, who's, uh, he was a tennis player from the age of about 14, left school, went and uh, lived in North Wales, which isn't glamorous, I'll be honest. <laughs> Even though I'm part Welsh, I can say that. It's okay. not glamorous. Okay. Um, but he... Gave up at about 18. He had a world ranking, which is pretty cool. Wow. So I'm pretty proud of him. And then he um, he turned his hand to rugby and then played pro rugby for 10 years. Wow. Yeah. So there's there's sport in the family. Like dad was a, a good rugby player. I would go every Saturday, um, get in the change room, run the kicking tee out. You know, that was my childhood pretty much. Your uncle Greg won a gold medal in rowing. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Uncle Greg. <laughs> yeah, right? Uncle Greg, yeah. I mean, um, what's going on with your family? I know, that's, it's, it's just like it's, rugby it's and fair. tennis and golf and rowing. I, yeah, I guess I can't claim. That. I He did marry into the family. Okay. Oh, okay. So my auntie made the sensible decision of marrying Greg when he just won a gold medal. <laughs> um, <laughs> eligible bachelor that he was, you know, <laughs> quite a good looking chap, six foot six. Um, with a gold ne- medal around his neck, so yeah, Rose body, Rose body, yeah. yeah. It's it's you know okay, he's married him, but it's pretty remarkable that you've had like it's you're a sporting family, right? Yeah, yeah, we are. We we are sport through and through. Um, you know, we're a very close family, and we all get along quite well. So yeah, yeah it's good fun. Uh, life growing up, then was it cricket always? Did you play golf growing up? Was it rugby? Yeah, rugby for me. Um, that was my first sport, probably the one I was better at um, growing up. Um, you know, just living through my dad. You know, every Saturday going to watch him, being around the guys um, as a kid. You know, all Saturday was just that was my life, um, and played rugby, and then you know, uh, just get my shoulder. 15, 16, and cricket sort of took off after that. Um, and then golf came in a bit later once I, you know, realized that I needed something else to do other than play cricket. Why do you reckon sports such a big thing in, in England and now you spend time in Australia, it's similar here? Like, why is that? I don't know. Man. Like, it just seems to bind people together. It mm. s- teaches you so much, I feel, you know, like um, through life, you sort of lean on a lot of the lessons you learn from sport and that helps you in your life away from sport and um you know it's it's a it's a cool thing you know everyone loves talking about sport yeah um you know i i don't know where we'd all be without it to be honest yeah well, we certainly we, we yeah. wouldn't be here would we no, definitely <laughs> not, definitely not. do you um do you get around the aussie rules at all now that you've been here a few times no because obviously like i've never Summer. You know, summer oh. and like, so yeah. w- when I, I came to Perth 10 years ago and played grade cricket um, so for uni yes. and that was when I first met, um, Agat. Yes. Ashen Agar. Ashen Agar. Yeah. Did you the play pe- together? The peanut as I call him. <laughs> the peanut. <laughs> um, so we played together, you know, uh, and he had a full head of hair and I've got a gr- cracking photo of it. Really? Um, yeah. All right. Um, so yeah. And then, but obviously AFL always, you know, starts as soon as that, you know, last yeah. round of games, you know. So I've, the closest I've come to AFL is having a Eagles and a, um, what's the other team? Don't that's even, a great question. Don't even I mean, know. That's just, just the purple it's, one. The it's, Dockers. Yeah, the purple one. Yeah. That is absolutely spot on. My <laughs> missus went out and bought some towels when we arrived and she bought one each. And I was just like, oh, right. <laughs> splitting, <laughs> splitting down the middle. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah. That's great. So at what stage do you... Um, you know, does sport become a professional option for you? Because it's all good to love sport growing up and playing as a kid, but you're now doing it at a professional level. Is it, you know, is it 15? Is it 20? Is it, like, how old are you when you start thinking, oh, I can actually do this for a job? Oh, I, do, I think, obviously, when you're getting to those teenage years, you sort of, 
you know, I sort of started to whittle all the sports down to like rugby and cricket. And then it was like, you know, which one am I sort of better at? Which one do I want to do? Rugby was my choice, but that wasn't sort of the choice that was given to me in the end because obviously, you know, I got to sort of 18 and I, I just, I wanted to play sport. I didn't really care which one it was. Um, must be nice to think that way. Like, well, I, yeah. I just want to play sport for a living. I pick which one. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm glad it was cricket. Now, you know, like my, I've, I know a few rugby players, and they're beat. Like their bodies are not good. Butchered. Yeah, like their faces are mangled. And hey, don't talk about mangled. Bodies. <laughs> yeah. no, they might be. The people watching them might not be able to see, but. You just come back from Brisbane and you boys got attacked by a swarm of mosquitoes, <laughs> yeah. I believe. I don't know if you can zoom in on this. Susan Jeez. Boyle's joined Susan us. Susan Boyle, has it been nicknamed? <laughs> Susan, Boyle, Susan Boyle's a call. The mosquitoes over there, no joke. Sorry, I had to talk about yeah, this. Yeah, we'll get it in it. there. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Now you can good. stop thinking about it. If yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, it's there. I'm glad you brought it up because I, <laughs> I probably would have done it. <laughs> it's, no, it's no Mitch Bison with the uh, – Mitch, Mitch Bison. No. Mitch Marsh with the <laughs> yeah. bison head. Yeah. Uh, I've lost where I was actually talking about. Cricket. Yeah, oh, but over rugby. Yeah, yeah, British yeah. Bodies. yeah, so like I think, you know, luckily cricket was the one and, you know, it's, it's sort of paid off. I don't know how, you know, like I couldn't really put my finger on it, you know, like I got released at 22 years old and had to go and find an, another team and moved away from home. So um, you, I just year on year found a way to just keep going. And Is I'll, that with like first class cricket, like a similar sort of systems in Australia and England yep. with that? Yeah, so you start grade. off, yeah, yeah, and obviously when I first started, T20 had just come out. Like right. it was, I remember going to the Oval and seeing it and there was big grounds and, uh, sorry, big crowds. And, and and so like we grew up, four-day cricket was our thing. You know, right. test match cricket was the game. Yes. Um, and that's the way we were taught. That's the way we were brought up. Whereas now it's sort of completely different. You know, you've got the young kids coming in and the first thing they can do is, you know, launch it out of the ground. Um, they're not necessarily so good at a forward defensive, but yes. you know, it's uh the game's changed and life has moved on. So that was Durham, wasn't it? You were dropped when you started? Is no, that- I so I started at Surrey. So I'm right. from South East London. Yes. And so I, I first started playing for Surrey. Right. Um I got released at twenty two and then I moved to Warwickshire. I went to university in Durham for a year right. and didn't study a lot. Um, hence why it's only a year, <laughs> um, but had a great time. And then, yeah, so, the, and then moved to Dar- um, Warwickshire, had seven years there, four years at Sussex, and then now back at Surrey, been there for about four years. Who were some of the players yeah. you would have played up, played against or played with? Um, those so the first, so first in at Surrey, it was like Mark Rampakash, Graham Thorpe, um, oh, Ian Salisbury, Martin Bicknell, um, Mark Butcher, hmm. these, you know, these like this the old Surrey boys. were like proper team of, you know, of, old boy. Yeah. Guys, like yeah. a lot of Alex Stewart. Right. Um, I'm just, he was my, he's my boss now. I should probably set him first. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, like uh, that was, that, those were the teams. And like, it was pretty interesting as a 18 year old yeah. seeing, seeing some of the things that would go on in, you know, <laughs> professional sport. Um, yeah. Like what? <laughs> well like there was some there were some alter yeah. egos around right. Right. <laughs> um, tell us like Mark, you... Mark Rambakash had a famous one called Jerry Jerry um, you know but like Frank the Tank type areas yeah yeah like you don't don't right. fuck with that don't fuck with Jerry right. yeah okay. um, but you know he scored a hundred hundreds so like right. you know if you score a hundred hundreds <laughs> is that who's that no, it's, <laughs> it's Jerry <laughs> the spirit of Jerry just living around um, yeah like Ramps was like really really nice and it's lovely now, you know, you meet him, lovely fella, quiet. Um, White line favour type. And then it's like Jerry comes out every so often. Great. But, you know, I think, um, you know, most elite athletes have someone like that inside. Yeah. Did you did you play with Zach um, at all? Obviously, you're playing with him now at the Scorchers. Zach yeah. Crawley? But, yeah, Zach Crawley. Yeah. Um, I've played golf with him. <laughs> right. I've never played cricket with him. You'll be surprised to know I've played golf with him. Yes. Um, I've, I've not played cricket with him before. Right. Obviously played against him. Yeah. Um, knew him pretty well, but not not shared a dressing room with him. So it was nice to to sort of meet him, and he's a cracking fella, just real down to earth. Also can hit it, can hit it. Yeah, you know that first innings at the Optus was, you know, comparing it to mine where I could l- barely lay bat on it two years ago at the Optus. Um, it, it was pretty yeah amazing to watch him come out and do that. So yeah, yeah. I was I was. 
I was hot on – I just thought first innings, new club. Was he like that in the rooms before that game? I just felt – I could feel it, mate. Did he recently got dropped by England? Was he named in the squad but he didn't get brought I in? I mean, he shouldn't have. He was one of the leading yeah. run scorers in the Ashes. I would have yeah, I, I think he's sort of – because he's sort of opening the batting for, for England, you sort of don't really see him mm. as this white ball guy. And I've seen him sort of dominate like some – good bowling in white ball cricket, um, playing for Kent. Um, and I just sort of, his game is perfectly set up for sort of opening the batting in T20 or 50 over cricket, you know, internationally. And he's getting those opportunities now, which is nice to see because I, I think, you know, he'll he'll do some damage. So it's great to see him get an opportunity here because he's this will be the first time he's played in a sort of franchise T20 tournament. So growing up in England, playing uh, first grade cricket over there, there's clearly a rivalry between Australia and England, oh. Ashes, and it may have, you know, really ramped up over the past 12, 24 months. Is that a, is that a thing you grow up with, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'd say, yeah, Ashes cricket is, yeah. yeah, pretty well embedded over there just as it is here. Um, I think it's a great rivalry, um, you know, and – Again, like where would we be without it? Yeah, stuff like that is hard to hard to build. Um, you, so we're lucky that we've had the history. You know, yeah. have you been up. to have you been to any Ashes tests over there? Yeah, I was at the Kevin Peterson one fifty right. at the Oval that we day, smacking them. Yeah, and I saw that was I there the day before when Flintoff was bowling and took Fifa or something like that. And yeah, Brett Lee, but the vividly Brett Lee after lunch. So I remember him getting dropped by Warney, and then after lunch, I remember sat sort of side on, and Brett Lee steamed in, and like Peterson came out and just flogged him everywhere. Like it was ridiculous. Like and you could barely see the ball released, you know, to the time he hit it. But you know, it was incredible to watch that. You play against or with any of these guys, the Aussie guys, someone like someone like a Brett Lee, or and I know you played with Joffrey Archer, didn't you? Like what, yeah. What sort of pacey guys? So life facing guys like that. I, I look at that game, your game, just think, not at all interested yeah. in standing in front of those. What, what's that like as a better? Yeah, no, I mean, again, like at Sussex, we had uh, Jofra, um, Tamar Mills, Chris Jordan, um, George Garton. Uh, so like four guys bowling ninety plus or one forty odd mm. plus. Um, and Joff is he's different because he'll try and kill you. <laughs> whereas the other guys will sort of like give you the odd bumper yes. um just to keep you honest yes whereas joff is like it's it's all about sort of like the egos like he's the out there to prove he's the alpha and it's 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 a game to him but like he's there and he's gonna put you in your place yeah so um he's tall right yeah he's big yeah and he and he 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 likes to step over the line is that right? Yeah, at training. Or at yeah, at training. Yeah. yeah, is that right? <laughs> yeah, I've heard that about um, Mitch Johnson. Like the in the nets is like no mercy. It's just I'm yeah, trying, yeah. I'm trying to. So Joffre's like that as well. Yeah, no, and it, it's what obviously makes him so. You know, when he gets out there, he, he's exactly the same. Um, yeah. So it's great. You know, it's just not nice when you're down the end. <laughs> also, yeah, what's it like? Tell me what it's like. Uh, I, I know you probably look at it like, oh, it's just you know whatever. I just do it all the time. But like, tell tell us what it's actually like facing extreme heat. Yeah. So like. Uh, I think when I was young, like I struggled because, you know, you don't really know how to deal with it and you're so worried about embarrassing yourself. You know, cause I, I remember when I was a kid, like 15, I faced someone really quick and I like fell over my stumps and knocked them all over. And it's like, <laughs> you know, like this is like embarrassing shit. Like, <laughs> like I'm meant to be quite good and like, I've just floored myself over <laughs> and had to walk off. Is there footage of that? Oh, that sounds wish. good. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, like, so, and then you like come into the pro game and, you know, in England, like it's all like front foot and then you get into the pro game and it's like guys can actually bowl good pace and you get, like, I got bounced out loads when I was younger, just cause you're, you're not used to it. Like the guys are here just so used to it. There's so much better at playing it. Right. Um, but in England, like the ball doesn't obviously bounce as hard or as fast or as high. So, right. um, then I had to, I actually came here, like the, the year I came here was, was to try and conquer a short ball. Right? And I worked with um, Noddy Holder down at Revo. And it was so fun. <laughs> like, Noddy Holder's like quite a sort of um, mythical character. Yes. Right. And like, 
I, I sort of just rocked in and was like, Noddy, I'd love to work for, with you. And he said, didn't really say anything. And he was like, okay. And <laughs> like, just didn't like, he sort of didn't say yes and didn't say no. And he was okay. And I had a, luckily I had a coaching gig at um, one of the schools uh, with Mickey Arthur. And so I worked at Revo with the kids all, from like when I arrived in October up to December and right. then went on Christmas break. And then I was like, still like Noddy, like, do you want to do some work? So it went on for months. Yeah, yeah, no. And it, and then he he said, I've been watching you. And I've been <laughs> I've been seeing the way you've um, you know, you've been handling the kids. It's been great. You've really invested. I'll work with you. Is that right? Oh, yeah. It was like a test. <laughs> yeah, it was like a initiation yeah. <laughs> to like prove your worth. And then um, yeah, and then he got me in the nets and we just did like pull shot after pull shot after pull shot. Right. So you get um, the ball machine. Yeah, yeah, like ball machine in at the head, like and and yeah, you have to learn to like lower your heart rate, basically. Right. Um, and sort of really sort of accept that like you're either gonna get hit or you and you or you're gonna sky one. But like once you've sort of accepted that side of it, um, and you can live with falling over your stumps <laughs> mm. if that happens, then you can sort of like come to terms with playing it. Just the <clears throat> it's the mental aspect before the physical yeah, aspect. Yeah, hundred percent. And like I, I've never played Test career, but I imagine you know facing Mitch Johnson or one of the quicks at the Gabba, you know, in front of those fans, it's an intimidating thing, and you know you have to really like be at peace with a you know making a mistake or making a fool of yourself or yes. getting hurt, yeah. and then you know, and then I think that's a step in the right direction to getting through it. It's not it's not a ball machine at the Gabba either because it. You know, no, it's not. It's yeah. not bouncer after bouncer. No, no, no. Yeah, you got to watch that one that you know swings back into your shoe. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's a it's a difficult game when you're when you. Oh, I look. T twenty is way easier because you can jump out of the way of it, and you know they've only got one one in the over. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. you know, um, as soon as you, you know, you face that one bouncer, you're like, um, you know, is that one for the over? He's like, yeah, right. Happy days. Get forward now. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, yeah, I didn't know that either. So you're seeing them. I would say you're seeing them well at the moment. You might agree or not agree. You're playing well, hitting them well. You would have had parts of your career where you weren't. Mm. What's the – can you put your finger? Is it experience? Is it focus? Is it, I don't know, time out there? Like what, what, what makes the difference between you playing well and being in good form and not being in good form? Um, I Again, like I just think – yeah experience does give you a lot and um you know in any walk of life i think you know you start out and you you have good days and you have horrendous days and you ride that wave of up down and i remember people used to always be like you know you're too emotional you're too emotional like you need to be a bit more level and um you know but then you don't want to lose that emotional side because that's what makes you ultimately who you are and hmm. um you know you don't want to suppress that so I, I would say, obviously, just, you know, you got to work hard. Like, yeah. you know, there's no really getting away from that. But it's it's mentally as much as physically. Like, I've, you know, there's a guy who's always out there who can hit a ball and, um, you know, but it's can you can you get yourself over the line mentally um, and get yourself through the, the dark days and find your way out through the other side? And like I said, I, I, I've been playing this game for 16 years now professionally and I, I don't really know year on year how I've managed to keep going <laughs> but all I know is that I've found ways to do some amazing stuff and I've done some daft stuff and you just sort of like hope that you do more amazing stuff than you do daft stuff <laughs> really um but mentally like I'm you know I'm I'm a big sort of believer in you know as a human being you need to be you know switched on and yes. you know my both my parents are psychoanalysts and psychiatric psychotherapists um so you know talking feelings all this sort of stuff is quite prevalent in our family is that right yeah so i've always you know when i got released i would i would i started working with mike Brearley, the ashes captain of england during the 60s 70s famously sort of handled ian botham <laughs> You know, and his uh, his like on and off field antics and yeah. got the best out of him. Um, but he's a you know probably one of the best um, psychoanalysts in in the country right. back in the UK. Um, 
which not many people would know, but you know, I was, I'm lucky enough to, to know him and work with him and have done since I was 22. That's, um, it seemed like that would be pretty important for when you're, you've, you've played a lot of, in a lot of countries and you travel around, you're changing teams <clears> and, and you're not sort of just like playing for one club for 15 years and then you're, you know, you know what to expect. So yeah. every, every year you're traveling around, it must be hard to, um, to keep that sort of mental focus with so much travel. Yeah. I think like the, 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 the greatest sort of, um, sort of challenges you find when you go to different countries is you're expected to perform pretty much straight away in sort of conditions you're not really used to mm. against bowlers you've never really faced. You know, you you want to impress your teammates, you want to impress the fans, you're getting paid good amounts of money to do so, you're away from your family. There are a lot of things going against you. So, you know, you do have to find a way of um, sort of handling all that. And, and I don't think any one man or woman can do that on their own necessarily. I think you need good people around you. And I've been lucky enough to, to have those people around me. Um, and you know, you seek out those people, you know, you meet people in all walks of life and you, you know, you take bits and pieces from, from each person you meet. And that's sort of the way I've, I've found the best way to deal with it. Um, my first sort of experience of, um, franchise cricket, I think I've, I think it was one like one of the T ten games in Dubai and um Shida is it Shida Shida, Shida Freedy was yeah. bowling leg spinner. Yes. With a like a massive crowd behind him. And bearing in mind it's T ten, so like you've got to hit sixes from ball one. I think I faced like five dot balls in a row first right. ball, like hit me on the leg first five balls and i'm just like oh just bury me now please <laughs> like somebody carry me off someone bowl me a bouncer so someone i can like, see on my stuff yeah, actually. like yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> so um and like, i had brendan mccullum at the other end and he's like going you right mate like <laughs> yeah, get on with it Come on, <laughs> man. Let's go. yeah and like managed to like work my way through it and smacked like a few at the end and came out the other side but like you know, little things like that. You're like, oh, that was that was tough. It's pro like it's proper pressure cricket. Like that's mm. how I look at it. Um, footy, the game I played, AFL, yeah. uh, goal after the siren is like a walk off. Basketball, three on the you know on the buzzer. What's that in cricket? And have you had any moments like that? Like as a bowler, yeah, you can <laughs> you know skittle someone. But have you had a walk off six, a walk off? I don't know. You've played a lot of cricket. I feel like you're teeing me up here. No, no, I'm not. Acting like, <laughs> I'm actually not. I yeah. hope I am. Well, I hope like, a good story. I, someone asked me this the other day. You know, like when so after the the game at the Optus the other day, like someone said, "Oh, is that the greatest you've played?" And I said, "No, nah, you know, the final two years ago, yeah, you know, um, was easily the best I've played purely because of the situation yeah. in the final four for twenty five. Yeah, came to the crease, grand final." Like we're talking. That's we're talking pressure. Don't worry about showing the free and giving you a lift. <laughs> like that's that's proper. Let's yeah. talk about that. Yeah, I think you know, and it's much more than that. It's you know, you you've got a massive franchise. People work the whole year, life, you know, to build up the Scorchers to be a great team, and and then if you're lucky enough, you get to be one of the eleven guys to go out on the field and play. And if you're lucky enough, you get to be one of the overseas, you get to play in that team out of all the overseas around the world. So you find yourself in a final and we've worked obviously so hard through COVID um, to, to, to be away from our families and stuff. Well, you know, I was living the dream. I was playing golf in Melbourne, <laughs> but all the Perth boys were away from home and stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, we, we get to the final and we're four for 20 odd or whatever we are. And it's like, you know, um, I remember sitting there, me and AT, Ashton Turner would sit in the sheds and, and watch most of the games um, in the change room first because we were batting five, six and generally Mitch would go and peel off a hundred and Ingo would go and smack 50 and, yes. you know, we weren't really needed that much. And then all of a sudden we were getting our pads on real fast. <laughs> um, and yeah, so just to be able to sort of have that opportunity and then to actually deliver with like one of one of my sort of now good mates in cricket um, in Ashton, yes, um, at the other end to share that you know the experience and you know to to get us to a place where we could win the game was pretty special. So you hit seventy six off forty one, yeah, 
Um, talking about being in the, in the sheds, like you're coming in at what six? Is that yeah? Four? I was yeah. in six. That so day. so at two for not many. Are you, th- are you getting your pads or you're like oh well, yeah, yeah? Like when are you getting your pads? Like when you, I'm when you pretty getting- relaxed. Like I'll I'll yeah. Like I'm like the other day I nearly got caught short because at Adelaide, I think Ingo went in and. Like I was not even, I didn't even have my pads on at that stage. Like, and he's faced his first ball already. So like, and you've only got 60 seconds or whatever you've got mm. to get to the crease and face. So I'm pretty chill. So yeah, we're in the sheds and, you know, we're just watching the TV. Um, and then obviously we lose the four and I'm sort of like, oh shit. Yeah. I get my pads on. <laughs> yeah. like, um, but I think that sort of helps as well. Like you yeah. don't have any time to think about it. You just get your pads, right, mate? You know? punch gloves with AT in the middle and right, let's, let's, let's go to work. I didn't, you know, I don't particularly like sitting in the dugout and, mm. you know, we've got some nervous watchers, you know, oh, is it swinging? Is it Who? spinning? Who? <laughs> I'm Who? Not, I can't. But yeah, I can't, no. Just say it's AJ Ty. No, <laughs> no, it's yeah, not AJ. Yes, no. He wouldn't know what he's doing. <laughs> no, he was, yeah, he was <laughs> checking out his um, rainbow. <laughs> um, he's yeah, he's getting yeah. his getting Making his sure he looks things okay. on. Yeah, signing autographs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's <laughs> more worried about like what color socks he's yeah, got. We on know what sort of operator. <laughs> well aware. Um, so yeah, so like it's um, yeah, no, it was, it was good. But like I'm, I'm just I'm better off away from all that, and I'm yeah. better just being like right. So these guys are just nervous chatters. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. always nervous chatters on the sideline. Yeah. Like and guys, you just like to zone in and, and be. I'm just sort of like, oh, you know, like. <sighs> you know, how bad can it be? Like, <laughs> it can't be that bad, you know, and, you know, well, I'll try and find a way of, you know, making the best of it if I can. So you, you guys were in hubs and there was a lot of different restrictions that year. Mm. Um, my last year in the AFL, it, that year, I remember speaking about it, like whoever won that 2020 season, uh, not many people would have thought the same, but the players inside the league was like, this is a good one to win, bloody brutal um, like I said, you're playing a bit of golf, that's okay. But you're so, you know, there's a lot of different stuff going on that you may be not you know, used to as a cricketer. But that, that was one of those years. Was that a difficult year leading into that? Or does it make winning the, you know, the flag effectively? Yeah, I think for on? the Perth boys it was because they were away from home and it, it felt different. And, you know, I was lucky. I'm, I'm an overseas player. I didn't have my family here. So I'm going to be in a hotel no matter what. I was lucky I had everyone in a hotel with me. Like I was, I was actually having a great time. Yeah. Um, the year obviously previous, you know, there was, you know, pay cuts and, yeah. you know, uncertainty, you know, we weren't playing cricket. We were unsure if there was going to be a future of cricket. Um, you know, luckily there was, and, um, you know, we, we got back to playing in, in, in conditions that weren't ideal, but we were back playing. So, you know, I think you've got to, you've got to be happy with that. You um, can't. <laughs> yeah. Correct. You can't. Yeah. yeah. Can't be like, te- you know, t- too complacent and complaining. What's, what's it like winning? Like Scorchers win that game. <sighs> what's, what happens? Well, I just remember like, um, A, I was just exhausted because like, it was hot in the i think they had the roof shut and it was just so hot in melbourne yes um and uh, you know as you saw the other night at the cabin like i don't really deal that well with humid conditions what happened, what, what happened to you at the well I, at first of all i'm dealing with the susan, susan ball susan. on the side of my face that's taking blood from my you bring <laughs> other parts of my its body own, it has its own mind <laughs> <at this stage. laughs> um and secondly i'm dealing with the third umpire won't let me have a pair of gloves you know i didn't say this yeah right okay like i just know but like, like in australia australia seems to have become really pernickety about rules rigid very yeah. rules, you know rules make things fun so that, dan's you know, a rule body <laughs> citizen i'm with i'm with you on this one no, don't worry Mate, you know, like I, I, the, they love a rule, yes, and yeah. they're they're stickler for a rule. Yeah. They're there for a reason. They make the game fun. Dead cons. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, you, you know, you can break them. Yeah. Rules. So you went all out a new pair of gloves. Anyway, like I'm just like, look, the, you know, without sounding too too um, egotistic, like you know, the, I I I need to be at my best. I need a pair of gloves. I can't hold this bat. Like I'm sweating that much. Right. 
I can't actually hold the bat. So the bat's turning in my hands. Like if we want this to be a close game for TV and the rest of the world watching, like give me a pair of gloves. Turning like, the cricket bat into a javelin after you have a swing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, are you not entertained? <laughs> like, <laughs> Russell Crowe. <laughs> Russell Crowe. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Russell Crowe and Susan Boyle out the middle. <laughs> so the inside of your glove, like the grip on your glove was just so, it was like more. Yeah, I'm just- soaking, but and I only like an idiot i brought four pairs of gloves so like the twelfers are putting them in the drying machine in the change rooms right. in between so like every two overs i get a pair of gloves but obviously you're i think you're only allowed at 5 10 and 15 but like i needed them like almost every over because i'm like sweating yeah. um you know i've got hand sweat that mm. just will not stop and um and like i'm using like spray yeah, dry, you know, claw. The dry claw and yeah. like um it's nothing's working <laughs> and i've not got enough gloves um and yeah and we're trying to win a game and i'm just like i said to the umpire like use your brain you yeah anyway <laughs> I'm sure that, goes, that, goes down, that goes down well you yeah know. like and yeah and the will. umpires are like well you know like well, we've got to use, you know, the rules are there for a reason. You yeah, should be an umpire. <laughs> 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 rules are there for a reason. I'm yeah. like, yeah, mate, but you've got to use your common sense here, surely. Like, anyway, they took the DRS and I was like, come on, run on. And then es- Esky was like, Steve Esnazi was like, I can't run on. And I, oh, it's just chaos. Anyway, I well, sprayed him when he got off. Yeah. <laughs> when That's I got right. out and over later, I was just like, so trying we to got onto him. that because it's it's hot during the Sydney Six. It's hot. Yeah. So this, <laughs> yeah. this is the winning grand final. Don't forget about last week. So, <laughs> You finish yeah, sorry, the game, I got, we win. I got no, just bring you it. back. Yeah, yeah, bring, bring you, me back. Bring you back out of the rage. <laughs> Don't get fined. So it's hot. So like, um, but the boys are like, we've got 160 on the board and like this, and like, I think by this stage, the Sixers are just like blowing up like inside mentally. They're just like gone because they were four for 20 yes. and then you know, we've got 160, mm. 170. We've got, you know, um, Richo steaming in with a new ball. Um, we've got Dorf. We've got, AJ, we've got Ags, we've got we've got just the bases covered, like, yes. and we were just too good. Like the, the whole season, we That's were just right. too good. We got Mitch, who's just on fire. Um, so yeah, it, it was the, the six was that were done, and um, yeah, I, I I think that moment you do get over the line, it sort of just does hit you, and you're just like. Yeah, fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. How good is this? Yes, well, that's great. And then, <laughs> and then, um, and then the next thing I see is Richo with blood pouring down his face because he ran into the huddle and Colin Munro gave him that's a right. people's elbow. <laughs> <laughs> the rock off the, the top, rock right? like just just like ended him um in the huddle as we we're like celebrating and then richo is giving an interview on tv with like this red like <laughs> blood coming down his face don't know why i wouldn't be other any other color than red but, <laughs> um so yeah it was just like it was just one of those things and then we just got absolutely wasted i was gonna say well, <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah. i mean how good in yeah. the in the room in the rooms room. like in kit until 5 a.m um, yes. you know, um, uh, videos and photos of, uh, the boys, yeah, um, Ingo and, um, his, his partner, Megan were in bed with a trophy. They're like sending, not naughty videos, but like they're sending videos of them just like cuddling and like Ingo's <laughs> passed out with the trophy like, <laughs> and it's like still, you know how they like make it luminous, like on the sides, they got these lights and they're like. The, oh, the yes. luminous nights on the yeah, side yeah. of the trophy and it's like in his eyes like I don't know how he's sleeping he's like, <laughs> like 100, 100 beers probably yeah. oh that is unreal um, but yeah like in the hotel uh, until f- sort of 5am whiskey sours beers um, champagne this is the sort of insight that we want mm. like, um, like it's just whiskey sours and then and then it was like um, Mitch uh basically sent a photo at so we like i don't know i must have gone to bed at five but mitch then sent a photo at eight being like get up like to the boys like the whole group and he's already in he's got his scorchers top on still he's got his medal and he's got a collared shirt over the top and he's going pub like now like let's (laughs) like get up and his words were it's not every day you know, and he's yeah. and he was bang on. Like it's not every day, you know, you get to win a final. And um, you know, he's a he's a he's a persuasive persuasive man in the group. The big know? bison, yeah, the big bison. The big bison, bison I mean, just puts puts someone like that in the group. He puts bums on seats, you, you know. Up. So um, you know, within about an hour, 
uh, you know, we were all in the pub again and I think I did my team song in the pub, which is great. What's your team song? Team song. I think, uh, sorry, not my team song. I did my initiation. So like every um, debutante has to do an initiation song. Really? Um, like your choice? Yeah, yeah. So there was a, there was four of us. I think it was me, Hats. Um, I can't remember who the other two were, but um, I think we did something like, you know, Sweet Caroline in the pub. And, That's a good choice. You know, the whole pub was, you know, loving it. Really? Well, you, you <laughs> in were, our you eyes, they were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think there was a, there was a few guys. Just everyone having, was having the best time. Yeah, 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 it was like one of those. <laughs> like, Cut to the pub, everyone's like, who's this guy? Guys, it's, it's 11 o'clock <laughs> like, <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Like, <laughs> no, don't worry, no, I'll love it. Oh, yeah, that's good. So, uh, so yeah. Oh, it's very good. So you missed out last year. Yeah. On another one. Yeah. Um, I know you can't speak about it probably to insightful levels, but given I can see how much you loved that, you know, that one against the Sixers, mm. it, it must have been disappointing missing last year. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I, I, I appreciate you, like, you, I sort of said to you, I can't really divulge too much um, because it's still ongoing. I've got the hearing when I go back in March. What about the, like, you know, the missing out on like your, your, your job, like the the yeah, being yeah. removed from teams because of it, and yeah, uh, yeah, and like these are these are all the sort of feelings that you know come to you at times, and you know, you like you you work your ass off to get to a point, yeah. things are going well. You know, you won it last year, man of the match. You want to come back. Mm. You get picked at gold. <laughs> you know, things are going well. And then, yeah, to miss out, to not, like, I was going to bring my family over. Um, you know, my wife obviously hadn't experienced the Big Bash the year before. She was pumped. Josh was three. He's pumped to get on the beach. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. we're ready to go. And then, yeah, to, like, to, to not be able to do that and then – you know, they win it in front of 60,000, yeah. you know, one of the, arguably one of the greatest games in Big Bash history. Yes. You know, it was, it was tough, like really tough and mm. beyond tough. Like, you know, there was some dark, dark days. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm lucky I'm sort of here now to be able to play. It's never happened before. An athlete has never um, been allowed back to play um, during the, the process. Mm. Um, but that sort of, gives an idea of you know sort of where i'm at and yes. you know i think people will will be able to you know once that once it's done and dusted hopefully if we if we get to where you know where i deserve to be which is back playing mm. um you know we can sit down again and yeah hash it all out oh man it's 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 i i honestly it's unreal <clears throat> Without knowing any of the details, uh, but having played at a higher level in a sport, I, I can I can imagine yet not empathise with you. Um, it's cool to see you playing and mm. playing well. And it, yeah, I think it's it's definitely like my wife's like, oh, you'll be better than ever. And while she is true, like you know, at some at certain stage, like playing sport um, without a care in the world is is powerful. You know, look at look at this guy right here. <laughs> <laughs> Give the people a look. Look at him. <laughs> this guy right here, um, the bicep. you know, almost probably canned Red Bull cricket, you know, or, you know, he thought he's never going to play a test match again. And then he goes and gets selected and smokes the England boys oh, yeah. around in the ashes. And now he's just loving life. Yeah. You know, and that's a powerful thing, you know, when you're in a place of, you know, you don't, you know, the, the consequence of the game doesn't necessarily matter. You sort of, when you're in those places of like, it all means too much, you know, it feels very constricting. And, and I think where I'm at is that, you know, I'm lucky to, to be here now playing. Mm. I don't know, you know, I might never play it again. So mm. um, I'm just, I'm just loving it. Mm. Yeah. We've had Mitch on the pod and, and, and I've known Marshy a little bit um, you know, over the years and you can see with him, but others, and maybe you to an extent that you can see when that, uh, where that weight, sort of drops a bit yeah. and maybe you know given that you've got a bit going on still it's yeah. not there yet but yeah you can also see when you don't have that weight of pressure and performance and you can accept how you go and maybe losing is okay maybe falling on your wickets is all right and you, yeah <laughs> you, you, yeah you, can, you know you get to the state where you can do that like you can yeah, actually yeah, perform yeah. better yeah 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 no 100 percent. and like i said like I, I think i've i've 
definitely come into my cricket over the, since coming back you know i've not really had a care in the world um sometimes that doesn't actually work because you need to actually care about yeah. what you do <laughs> yes you know and um and I, I you know and i've i spoke about that with um during you know i didn't have a great season in the 100 for example this year um just because i i was too the other way and um and i simon katic was is our head coach and i i yeah. spoke to him about that and i just said look i I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that right. Um, but, you know, it's been a process and I feel like it's going in the right direction. Mm. Um, cool. Mentor-wise in, in cricket, it, it was something like you spoke about a couple of them really, but um, you'd see given the different teams you play with around town, you'd see some really good leaders and either players or coaches. Has, has there been a few across the journey that have like really helped you? Or? Yeah, I mean, you start, you can, I think, yeah, you'd, you can always look, outwards but you know you start at home really you know mum and dad mm. like um dad in particular you know played sport to a high level also happens to be pretty amazing psychoanalyst in terms of understanding people and the way they work and the importance of you know just just broadening everything out you know let's not let's not you know overhype one thing or the other let's just you know let's just take life with a bit of a pinch of salt and and move through it and um you know pr try your best and be proud and mm. so he you know he's been a he's been a massive influence for both me and my brother and and mum's always been there as well so you know and then moving further afield obviously you know wife um lives and dies bless her you know every ball probably <laughs> um but again through this last year She's been my absolute rock. Um, yes. And then you move into cricket, people like Mike Brearley, my, um, Mike Yardy, played for England, obviously left arm spinner. Yes. Um, even like Bo Casson, you know, here developed a nice relationship with him during the, the years gone by. Um, so, um, yeah, you, I, I definitely have a few, few guys I've, um, you know, lent on in different, situations but um viv richards was the first book i ever read um you know so like the master blaster really? um he was sort of like uh just you know walking around absolute swagger the king the king like you know no helmet which i would never do <laughs> <No>. but <laughs> like um chewing gum you know just Smacking just it. like like presence um and yeah, I think um, Ash and Agar gave me my my cap when I first arrived, and um, I think he he recognised that like I sort of have this sort of like Surrey strut thing. <laughs> is that what he calls um, it? Is yeah. It? He, so he gave me the nickname Hollywood, um, That's which good. is which is a pretty cool uh, nickname, I think, because the boys <laughs> love it. Um, but uh, and and I think they really like it as well because you know the the WA boys are not sort of inherently like that you know they sort of leave that to the sydney boys you know the <laughs> the walking around the, uh, the egos me. the look at me um but i think the wa boys you know they sort of enjoy the fact that i bring a bit of confidence and swagger to the group so hollywood i like that <laughs> <laughs> hollywood evans so uh yeah i can thank uh <laughs> agates for that um i've heard um someone describe just recently actually um uh, all made as the as English the English answer to Glenn Maxwell. Have you who? heard that? No. There you go. That's Describe pretty. Who? That's oh, pretty. Scott Laurie Evans. Yeah, Laurie Evans. Just call Laurie Evans old mate. <laughs> it's just old mate. Yeah. Wait, so that's, that's that's pretty Hollywood. That's really. Yeah. Wow. Who? I mean, I well, wish it depends, I, it depends who it was. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's nice. That's I nice. mean, yeah. I mean, I I'd love to have the bank balance of <laughs> the, the <laughs> big, <laughs> big dog, but um, he's a he's a fella as well. Like he. I've played golf with him quite a bit. Um, he's a very Maxi. good at golf, isn't he? He loves his golf. Um, and yeah, I mean, what a year he's having. Um, so um, yeah, no, off, what a compliment. Off the back of whatever happened with his trampoline or whatever he was doing. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, whatever that was. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned your brother there, Ollie. Um, someone, I think Dan or Jaden, uh, showed me before we jumped on. <laughs> Jump right. on being probably a good word. Correct. What, what, what am I talking about here? So I, someone showed me a piece of vision and Dan was like, you got to look at this. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, is that Laurie? It kind of looks like Laurie. And then he's, he's, it's a guy, he's clapping his hands, he's getting yeah. the crowd going and then he does a Frosby flop into yeah. a wheelie bin. Yeah. That's your brother. Yeah. So yeah, my brother, 
um, who, like who said, had a world ranking in tennis. He's he's a tennis player. He's a rugby player. He's now working in the city. He's got a fir- he's got his first job, right. and he was hired by a guy who fair play like he made it good in recruitment. He went out on his own. He's looking to build a team. The first bloke he hires is my brother, who's never done a day's work in his life. <laughs> he got a, he got a degree from university only because his auntie and mum like basically did all the work for him. <laughs> your mum, yeah, and your auntie, and my auntie, <laughs> his auntie, and his mum. He went to school uh, sixth form, and in sixth form. Um, they called his name out every day in the register and he never actually did a day at school. But because we knew one of the teachers, he just signed him in every day uh, because he needed to get into university. But at the time he was playing tennis, he's, you know, trying is to- Sixth form like year 12? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sixth form is like the last two years at school. So he's, where was he? So you do your A-level. So he's playing tennis. Right. So, but whilst he's playing tennis, he's actually been called out in the school register. But he's not there. But he's not there. So the, like this guy, you know. <laughs> That's against the rules, by the way. But... Yeah. It, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not <laughs> so, so he's, so then he, he goes into this job and he's the first guy that this guy's hired. Got a hire. Franchise and, cornerstone. Like, I'm like, going, what? You've got a job <laughs> and you're the first guy that he's hired. Yeah. Like, and he's starting a new business. Oh, this has got, you know, I'm just like, oh my word. But anyway, I know that he's a character and I know that in recruitment that goes a long way. So he takes clients to Twickenham. I was going to say, how is this, how is this <laughs> leading into what I've said? So, so yeah, yeah so he yeah, takes great. clients to Twickenham. Sorry to be long. That's, no, 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 it's terrific. Great. He takes clients great. to Twickenham and he gets absolutely binned. So Twickenham's a, an oval? Twickenham's the rugby ground. Rugby ground so yeah. England are playing rugby at Twickenham. It's a big day out for clients. He takes his clients to Twickenham mm-hmm. and it's the first time he's taken clients out mm. and he gets absolutely wasted <laughs> yeah. and then decided, wasted, you know, to get a, a group, of, like he's got a massive crowd around him, starts a gymnastics clap <laughs> and then performs the jump into the bin and <laughs> someone videos it. It goes onto um, Instagram and then Lad Bible uh, get hold of it, uh, and then like it goes round viral. It, yeah, like massive. Like, and then obviously, I, I realize it probably doesn't get over to Australia, but like in the UK, if I say, "Oh, you know, my brother's the guy who jumped in the bin," like <laughs> people know, people know what I'm on about. <laughs> like it's a thing. So yeah, he's um, he's an absolute oh, character. Mate, that is gold. You know what though? Like his clients probably think he's a legend. Oh no, he yeah, he's <laughs> he's made so much money from jumping in bins. <laughs> <laughs> End of the story is he got sacked the next day. And he no, was yeah. no, he genuinely is. Like the clients absolutely loved it, and uh, yeah, he's doing really well. Funny, he's a legend. That's funny. <laughs> uh, we, I just had a, we had a question. <laughs> Read this. 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 Uh, you, you wanted to ask about this uh, above social media. The last. Oh one. The, yeah. The um. So obviously the ashes <laughs> just gone was pretty. Was a lot of controversy around it. Uh, got it was actually good because Test cricket between. Australia and England, like boring. I feel like it got a bit boring. boring. Yeah. This last series, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, what's your thoughts on the hissing in the room from the old the old boys in the uh, Lords? Uh, what the Lords? Yeah, 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 the all long room. All, all yeah. that's written here is Lords hissing room. Lords <laughs> so. hissing room. <laughs> yeah. So is this in relation to like when Dave Warner yeah. gets in a fight and yeah. you know Quages, they're not happy? Yeah, with, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. just walking through and they're going boo hiss hiss. Like, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess is hissing like is thing? like a. Yeah, I mean, look, you've got to you've got to know that, like, in the MCC long room, mm. that's what of called, lords, yeah. Yeah, yeah. are the well-to-do people of the UK. Yes. Like, it's the upper echelon. It's you know, it's not the nuts and bolts of the of the world. It's yeah. you know, it's people who have um, devoted their life to a list and a, uh, getting in and being a member yeah. of that. And you have to wear a jacket and tie and you know, so the Aussies obviously do the the best though running out thing, which mm. I'm cl- completely on board with. By the way, like I, you're pro run out. Ah, yeah, I didn't see the problem at all. Right, because I think if it was on the other way around, like we would have just laughed and taken it. Besto tried many times. Yeah. So, um, so so obviously, you know, the whole country is up in arms about it. But you know, I think the cricket community are like fair. Carry on. Same, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Like doesn't matter. Correct. Um, and. Uh, 
so I guess, you know, the Aussies come in and like they just get absolutely abused. Um, I was trying to look for their names. It's like oh, Neville like, Longbottom off yeah, Harry Potter. Yeah, there you go. Gareth T- Treble Berry. And like, <laughs> like it's genuine proper posh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Laurie yeah. Evans. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's from, yeah, from South East London. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. So uh, headline on the back page of the paper tomorrow, Laurie Evans says, say any Chris. <laughs> uh, mate, this has been a ripping chat. Really had a a lot of good fun, but some good stuff on the mental side as well, mate. Thanks. Have you, have you enjoyed yourself? I have. I've loved it. We're not done yet. Yeah, good. Social media, not social. Schofield, Scotial. Yes, thank yeah, you like very that. much. Yeah, I well thought you played. might like Hollywood. I thought you might like that one. Now, we've got the questions from the people for you. You've heard enough from Dan and I. This is where the people get asked you the questions. <laughs> Sorry, Jaden's just put some of their names up. Bartholomew Finton Smythe, Angus Shed- Sheldrick. Sh- Charlie Horsewater. <laughs> like this is that can't be right. That's the bloke's names in the MC. Th- MC right, okay. Th- yeah, Bartholomew yeah, yeah. Frinton Smythe. Yeah, I, <laughs> no, I don't mate. know where these people live. No. It's not the Next circles in which I, I sort of <laughs> oh, that's good get stuff. around. Okay, now uh, let's go. Uh, Dubster. Uh, are the Scorchers the best T20 team in the world? Mm, good question. I, yeah, I would say that, you know, at full strength, definitely. Um, yes. Obviously, Mitch isn't playing. Greeny's not playing. At's out. Um, Laurie Evans going to Dubai. Doesn't play finals. Yeah, God, yeah, brutal. Yes. Um, yeah, I would say two years ago that that team was. I don't know if I've played him better. Mm. Um, and you know, when you stick behind it, the the fr- the franchise itself, and like the sort of um, the feeling of you know the WA feeling it's like it's not really like anywhere else you know it's like hard work understated huh. brilliance yeah. like it's <laughs> yeah that's cool you know like it's it's hard to build and they've built it and that just exists you walk in the building and you know yeah 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 goes. and it's like it's obviously been years of you know hard work and and a, a sort of a, a build up and luck you know you're seeing the fruit of the youngsters now coming through and you know you've got that core group of guys who are just just you know going out on the field and and performing mm, and winning yeah mm. that's good uh beast underscore t underscore boy underscore and underscore co wow a uh, beastie boy and co okay great yeah who's your favorite bowler to belt for a six uh Oh, well, AJ Ty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jamie Overton's a good mate of mine, and um, so you know, belting him around the other night was was good fun. Is that good with guys? Is, like t twenty 20 stuff you're playing against mates, like you can see that you can see, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that must be that must be. Yeah, good. it's good fun. Like we were playing golf, you know, a day later in Adelaide. Like we're we're good mates and. Um, any words to him like nah not really you know like he sort of picked me up you know bless him he came to pick me up because uh, we were in Adelaide and I, he had a car so I was like mate can you pick me up he's like yeah and so not only am I getting him a, a, an Uber driver <laughs> to golf he gets in the car he's like well played yesterday, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, oh, through gritted teeth. You Bless know, he'd been practicing that the whole drive. Like, yeah, no. Just it's, pretend. Yeah. That's so, good. Um, that's yeah, really no, it's good fun. That's really good. Uh, Marcus Evans, 864. Yes, uh, that's my dad. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love that. I was like, I feel like this could be a relation. Connection. Where's uh, your 864 come from? What is it? I've got no idea. I think he's got about place. 12 handles on his scrap as well. He's got a burner account. <laughs> uh, who's got the best banter in the family? And what do you think about your brother's tattoos? This is great, Marcus. Very good stuff. <laughs> he's going to absolutely love this. Um, well, he's obviously teed that up because, you know, he probably thinks he's got the best banter. Right. Ollie, if you look at my brother's Instagram page, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good flick. Right. Um, you know, he's very funny. He went on first dates. You know, Did the TV he? show, Did he? Christmas special, gave a girl a photo of him in a um, gold thong. <laughs> <laughs> like does, in a frame. Like yeah, yeah, like in a frame, like framed photo of his ass in a gold thong. He, and, uh, first you know, day, he, national yeah. TV. It's Christmas Day, by the way. Like, so the whole world is watching something on TV yeah. and it's the Christmas Day special. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so... Um, what about mum? Is mum funny? Mum's funny. She tries to be funny. Give it Bless to her. Give yeah, mum. Mum, 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 mum tries to crack a joke. Um, but yeah, no, Ollie's probably up there. And what do you know. think about your brother's tattoos? He got a tattoo but, and my mum was like, there's a couple of things, like there's a couple of rules. 
Um, no one night stands at the house when we're growing up okay. and no, you know, no pregnancy. And then. That's fair enough. Yeah. Um, it's fair enough rule, I suppose. And uh, no tattoos. Like those were the like pretty right. like hard rules amongst others. And so like I being the older brother um, and sort of like I'd sort of adhered to all of those rules. Yes. And then my brother comes along and breaks all of those rules other than the pregnancy one. I will say that. Okay. But he's um, he's recently just got married to an absolute ripper of a girl who's maybe as crazy as he is, <laughs> but she's an absolute ripper. And they had a wedding and um, they had a uh, it was an outside and they had a, a barn and like there was a DJ in the barn and then it, like the dance floor was sort of here, but it was like sort of the middle of nowhere really. And then I was like, that barn looks like the best place for a dance floor. And then, so like everyone just like got in underneath this, like, like looked like a sh shed and um, it became the dance floor. And then people like climbing on the beams and on the roof. And like my dad was on someone's shoulders fighting another dad on his shoulders. <laughs> I think you know in the pool. Like, like yeah, yeah, like yeah. on shoulders and like they're having a fight trying to push each other off. <laughs> And like, yeah, Marcus, usual wedding stuff. <laughs> Marcus just wants to, he just wants to wrestle people. Like, yeah, 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 on the beard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Get Someone get me on my shoulders. Yeah, get me on my yeah, shoulders. Like, I want yeah. to fight the other day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, it, it, it's classic like rugby banter. That's like, right. you know, um, all in good fun. And then he um, and his wife got um, a tattoo of the barn on their on their arms i think right. um so okay. my mum's not overly happy but <laughs> i think it's too late <laughs> yes it is yeah. have you got uh, have you got a tattoo no S still still not my missus is desperate for me. i think she married the wrong person because she keeps like pointing out a bloke with like a full sleeve <laughs> and jane now produces just yeah me. like oh she'd be all over you <laughs> 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 and like i'm like completely not like i mean the most rogue thing i've got on is like this little ring on my right. finger clean skin we like it um like, so yeah muscle, yeah like the muscles yeah, over yeah. here yeah. Yeah, so, so um, so only there's only so much sex for us to go on, boys. Oh, oh, <laughs> so much to go around. Uh, geez, we're off track. I love it. Yeah, I love the are. areas we've got into here. Uh, Robbo Gray. Uh, could be Rob, it could be Robbie Gray. Where Port well, Adelaide star. Maybe who's uh, the best in be. the Scorchers tubs? Ah, oh, well, is he? Is he talking? Yeah, is he going where we all think he's going? I, I don't know. I don't know. Could, could be. The, I don't know. You I don't, don't have your life. I don't know what that's asking. Um, well, I mean, like it could be, could be like in the baths, and then mm. if you're in the bath with someone, and you know, yep, do you understand? Maybe. Do you understand? Oh, yeah, I don't right. think it's like who's the best bather. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he wants to know who's the greatest at cleaning himself. <laughs> Maybe he does. <laughs> I love where we get. Oh, look, you can answer it if you yeah. like. Yeah. That doesn't want to. Yeah. Ryan Dunn, thoughts on Bearstow dismissal? Ashton Agar. Oh, best. <laughs> <laughs> I get now thoughts on bear status dismissal. Oh, we already talked about it. No, yeah. no, it's, yeah, I'm um, yeah. play on. Yep, yeah, right. Like Correct. bear slow, just yeah. Get on do you it. think? Get do you think it. the English team are also like that behind closed doors? But they got a oh mate. To be have outraged? you seen the yeah? Like have you seen the clip of um, Bice and Travis Head trying to explain the 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 Lord's um, lunchroom on. Right. Um, on that other podcast. Please no. Um, what other podcast? No other podcast. No, no, there's no other. That's why I didn't <laughs> want to name it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. you. Know, so, but there's another. So there's lots. There's lots of podcasts. Cr cricket podcasts. And yeah. there's a video of them. Um, oh, is it great, great Cricketer? Yes. Yeah, great. great Cricketer. But great, I think they're great, doing great, guys. Great, great pod. Yeah, great great pod. Guys. And I think they're doing it for seven at the time. Um, they're, they're doing this short video and they're sort of explaining the Lord's dressing room when right. this has happened because they all go off to lunch and buy sort of. You know, is uh, Bluey walks in. Um, Besto, his nickname's Bluey. Um, Besto walks in and it's like, "Are you happy with that?" To like the Aussie. So, so I, so I haven't set the scene. Right. So, like wow. in the Lord's long in dress in the lunchroom, you've got three tables like this, three long tables. Um, the England team sit there, the umpires sit here, and then the Aussie team sit here. Right. And you sit down, and it's not like table. You know. Um, buffet service you sit down and someone comes and asks service. you what you want like and there's a menu wow this and is like great. it's the greatest food you'll ever eat like it's amazing right. um famous and and it, the only thing missing is bottles of wine on the table like right. you know um Classic. so 
so the, all the teams are sat down like waiting for their food because you know you got 40 minutes and then you need to get it in you and get out um but and and Bearstow's walked in and you know the Aussie Aussie team all sat there and this he's is like, on camera yeah well well I don't know if it is on camera but like they're giving the interview yes. at the time and they're saying you know Bearstow walks in and goes are you happy with that you know are you happy right. with what you've just done and I, I don't know who it was, but someone went, yeah, very. <laughs> <laughs> and you could just imagine the room is like. Because this is the saddle lads too. Oh, mate, like <laughs> you've got both teams in there, but I can guarantee you the England boys are like oh, trying not to spit their food out onto the table <laughs> yeah, in very. hysterics of fit. Because like it is just funny to like see someone blow up you know, like change room blow ups are brilliant. And some people on purpose come in and wait for the change room blow up just to watch and just giggle <laughs> at what's going on. What's the, what's the worst you've ever said? Change room blow up or funny? Doesn't have the worst. Uh, I've well, good well I've, I've seen a, a few um, and I know that uh, Jason Roy famously uh, launched his cricket bat onto the um, couch in the dressing room. There was like a padded so um sofa mm. and the bat bounced back up and fractured his cheek oh boy <laughs> that's brutal <laughs> you know? and you're just like things you do like when you get out um so uh so you yeah you said you used to get a bit of money like, i it? did but like and like the worst i did was probably just curse like i'm like <laughs> how shit are you like you know at yourself again <laughs> you know it's like stuff like this comes out <laughs> Um, the skeleton people's mouths, like, the skeleton it, and it's all realized. like you know, like it's just just nonsense. Um, <laughs> uh, so um, so anyway, so like they're all sat in there, and then obviously everyone's like spitting out, and Bison's like saying he's spitting out his pumpkin soup. And <laughs> yes, very pretty, pretty funny. That's um, good. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, Saxon underscore Soundus. Uh, you seem to love crowd interaction. Why is that? Oh, because I think it helps the fan engagement. You know. We've all been to, I don't know if you've been to like obviously football back home, soccer, you know, the the players are sort of up there, they're untouchable and I just think cricketers are normal blokes and you should just sort of treat people like that. You know, we're not, we're not rock stars. We're just, you know, cricketers and, you know, if a kid says hello to me, I'm going to say hello back. Um, and it, it just sort of increases the the feeling around you know going to the cricket. Are you in black shoes? Is that you? Yeah, yeah. Are we tracking Laurie down the bed? You were right. In, Laurie was right in front yeah, of us. Yeah, I think you were hurling some abuse. Actually. I was not abusing you. I was <laughs> I was I was hurling uh, a, a, a like a, a how do I say the opposite of abusing? Uh, Applaudance. No. Praise. I was yelling abusing you with praise. Yeah, <laughs> you threw at praise. least ten beach balls. back Yeah, in the crowd. yeah, yeah. Like the I beach ball, great. Oh, good. Like yeah. So I just love it. Like I mean. You know, so it's a um, we're so lucky to you know perform in front of people, and people actually want to come and watch us. Like, yeah. <laughs> how good is that? That's you know, right. doing something that actually brings people joy. A uh, couple left. Thomas underscore Burton. Uh, how do you stay focused when you've just shot a great shot um, or sh hit the boundary? Oh, I feel like we should get serious. Um, I guess uh, you know. I think people uh, will talk about processes and like in between balls, you know, you try and make, um, you try and have a mental routine whereby you um, you switch on or off or like, you know, you might sing a song or um, you basically just try and, you know, you see some guys will say, watch the ball, you know, as, as you face up and yes. stuff like that. And that just brings you back into, you know, what's gone is gone. doesn't matter whether you've hit it for six or, you know, nearly got out you know if you're still there facing the next ball is the most important so it's i guess mentally you need to just find a way of staying in the present moment and what do you do i think now like when i was younger i would get a song in my head um you know so i'd choose a song for the day and try and play it over and over and over in the car on the way there so that it was yes. you know i'm rehearsing it as i get out there and and often those are the best times you've played like when you're just humming away to yourself you know Oh, one of that way, Backstreet Boys, yeah, um, Spice Girls, yeah, Elton John, yes, all the sing-alongs. Okay. Um, so yeah, and then, but now I, I, I think now I'm just sort of just so sort of used to just walking out there and you know trying to just be out, enjoy it, and 
be out there. I, I wouldn't say I, I'm, I, I, I do have a routine now. Yeah. Up to the last one, the Eggman. Uh, how do you like your eggs? Sincerely, the Eggman. The Eggman. Well, uh, I probably would like them on top of some smashed avo um, uh, with uh, a bit of, I don't know, some chili flakes on there. Yeah. Uh, scrambled, probably. Yeah. Preferably yeah. scrambled. Yeah. Chili um, scrambled. Chili scrambled, yeah, with um, just a, an oat flat next to it. An oat what, flat. What, what, oat flat what? Oh, right, yeah. What do you think it was? I you thought some confused. English, like some oats. I'm assuming it's oat flat white. Oat flat white, yeah. Yeah, right, okay. He's, like, he's speaking our language. I think yeah. I think that's what they call it here. Yeah. You know, Look, oat mate, flat white. There's some, there's some rogue areas and coffee <laughs> over here in WA's. <laughs> Don't get me started. It's a uh, serious business. Laurie Evans, mate, it's been really good to chat to you. That's been great fun. Good luck Thanks tomorrow. Coming. We're chatting to him on a Friday. Yes. yes. Playing tomorrow. Yeah. 41 degrees. Oh, my God. Uh, look, can't say I'll be out in the sun like you will be, mate, but <laughs> I'll be thinking of you. Thanks, <laughs> mate. I appreciate it. Good luck. Well done. Uh, there we go. Laurie Evans, everybody. Back chat double underscore. That's what you do on socials. Uh, Laurie will be sharing all of our stuff that we do with him over the next couple of days. Uh, big thanks to our supporters, our sponsors. First of all, to the Perth Scorchers. Yeah. Uh, elite areas from them this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we can see them winning the grand final, just like this one. I tell you what, this hat, 10 year anniversary. Thanks for coming. Mm. I like this hat. Must cut. Fleet Network pairing the podcast this year. Swimply, Whippersnapper Whiskey, Mugger River Roasting Co., Blue Bet, Shelter Brewing Co. Who am I missing? Mumba Digital. Thank no. you to our sponsors, our supporters. Yes, that's right. Those eyebrows are going over there from Laurie. We have a lot of people getting around the podcast. Nice podcast. Thank you. It is. Uh, we've had fun. Sign up as a Patreon for the last story from Laurie Evans. It's going to come up right now. Backchatstudios.com.au. Bye-bye.